Good morning, welcome. I am Liam Ovial, a student of ACU Strathfield, and I'm here to talk to you today about the proposed intervention of increasing tax on sugar sweetened beverages, or SSBs as I refer to them, in order to reduce obesity rates in Australia. <coughs> According to the World Health Organization, being overweight or obese is defined as having abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that may impair health. Obesity is a worldwide epidemic with Australia facing its fair share of the plague. In a report across the 2014-2015 period, the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare reported that approximately 63% of the adult population were either overweight or obese, with close to 5 million Australians being obese. One in four children under the age of 17 were also reported as being obese. A large contributor to this epidemic is the increased intake of sugar-sweetened beverages post World War II, and more recently across the past 30 to 40 years with the increased prevalence of Coca-Cola, a major driver in the sugar sweetened beverage market. This idea is explored by papers published paper published by Malik and Co. through the US National Library of Medicine, where evidence-based research indicates SSB intakes tracks positively with the rising rates of obesity. As an influencer to change a proposed theory to reduce SSB intake and therefore attempt to reduce a major risk factor contributing to obesity, is to introduce a higher government tax upon SSBs. Many political and educational bodies within Australia, such as the Greens Party and many universities, are in favour of introducing a higher tax on SSBs. As a result, consumers serve an economical disadvantage and are hopefully deterred from buying the SSB, as they are forced to pay more for the product, as suppliers must charge, charge more as a result for the higher tax. As a result of this intervention, as explored by Stephen Duckett and House Ferrison in an article published by the Grattan Institute, a sugary drinks tax, increase in tax could potentially generate up to $500 million in annual revenue, both through tax and the reduced burden of obesity on the healthcare system. Within this article, Duckett and co. explore the idea that by increasing, increasing tax to 40 cents per 100 grams of sugar, the price of a 2 litre bottle of soft drink could approximately rise by 80 cents. This could potentially target the lower socioeconomic classes who experience higher rates of SSB intake. Han and Powell, in a paper titled Consumption Pat Patterns of Sugar Sweet Beverages in the US, highlights this fact <coughs> that people of lower socioeconomic class tend to exhibit high levels of SSB intake. This is majorly due to poor dietary and health education and easy access to cheap and poor nutritional value foods and drinks. An article titled The Growing Cost of Obesity, 2008, published by Access Economics, reports that, and I quote, it is estimated that in Australia, obesity causes 23.8% of type 2 diabetes, 21.3% of cardiovascular disease, 24.5% of osteoarthritis, and 20.5% of colorectal, breast, uterine, and kidney cancers. By reducing intake within the target classes of the lower socioeconomic demographic, the burden of the health on, of healthcare on the government will be reduced, allowing allocation of funding to change, with more money being put into educational campaigns and programs, as well as other health promotion initiatives to increase the healthy eating habits of these lower socioeconomic classes. By introducing high tax, the government would be taking a stance on the obesity situation in Australia, promoting prevention rather than treatment. By educating people on the determinants of their own health, you give people a choice and they can therefore ultimately create their own healthy lifestyle. Overall, the targeted population groups of this intervention will experience greater levels of physiological health with reduced likeness of obesity, type 2 diabetes, some cancers and other forms of sickness and disease, removing multiple risk factors to longevity and to poor health. As explored by Hill in how obesity rate relates to socioeconomic status, health inequities may be positively benefited through assisting lower socioeconomic status people in Australia. Evidence suggests in developed countries, people with high levels of education are more informed of healthy eating habits and have relatively easy access to good decision-making practices. Therefore, by providing health promotions and initiatives, as well as educational programs, Lower socioeconomic classes will be given the opportunity to remove their own health inequities.
financial barriers to lower socioeconomic classes will be removed due to the greater revenue from the higher tax, allowing for these programs and initiatives to be set up within communities, overall greatly reducing health inequities. This idea is further explored within a paper published by the World Health Organization titled Obesity and Inequities. People who are overweight or obese, mainly due to their lower socioeconomic status and resulting poor healthy decision-making practices and resulting SSB intake, not only suffer from physiological effects of being unhealthily large, but they also experience higher rates of discrimination, bullying and social exclusion, <coughs> which leads to lower self-esteem and overall psychological problems also. So therefore, by introducing, introducing higher tax thresholds on SSBs, funding and education can assist these people in not only overcoming their physical problem, but their, also their overall health, including both social and emotional aspects, removing major health inequities in terms of obesity prevention. Hopefully this tax will be implemented into the government policy as to change health outcomes and inequities experienced by so many Australians. Thank you.